we're going to throw some salt. Now, that's a technique that's used in watercolor almost exclusively. First, let's talk about the salt. Artists use all kinds of salt for this technique. Some use big pieces of rock salt, some a little bit in between there, which is called kosher salt. And personally, I use uh, pickling salt canning and pickling salt. It, it's sort of fine, but but it, uh, it works well. Now, the whole secret to throwing salt is how wet your paper is before you throw the salt on it. Too wet, it's not going to work. Too dry, no, it's not going to work either. You, you have to get it to the point where it's just starting to lose its gloss. Then you can sprinkle salt on it and it'll probably work well. What do we use this salt for? Some artists use it for snowflakes when they're painting a dark area like, you know, at night and, and they put uh, snowflakes in there. Uh, personally, I use it for rocks. If I want to put texture on rocks, I'll go in and, and underpaint and let it dry and then throw some salt on it and, and let it come out. Uh, now I also spatter it with other things to give a, a rocky look to it. Uh, you can use it for almost anything to give texture. A word of caution. Some people overuse it. You can look at watercolors. You can see they've thrown salt and, and that was their primary purpose was to throw salt. Uh, I use it as it needs to be used. Uh, and another thing, a lot of people don't paint over after they've thrown salt. I will do both. I'll paint over it, I'll throw it again, I'll throw it again, I'll paint over it and paint over it. It's just a technique and it's just a tool that you can use. Uh, use it as you need to use it. Uh, now with that, with this demonstration, I'm going to use cobalt blue, transparent, non-staining, easy to lift, and granulated. You've got to know the characteristics of your paint. You put a staining pigment down there, well, you're going to lift the paint on top. Your paper's still going to be the same color. It, the, the salt will not lift that color out of that paper. Probably not as much as you would like for it to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to use just a little, little piece of uh, 140 pounds on a pad. Uh, you can do it large, it's, it's just a matter of degree. A brush. This particular one's a flat, Kalinsky Sable flat. It'll hold a lot of water and we'll put it down there. Okay. I want to give it a shot and see how it works and uh, let you see. Okay, what here we go. We're going to try and give this a shot. Let's see how it works out, okay? Right now this is way too wet for me to throw salt. Now what I'm looking for here is a nice sparkling effect once I get it down. As you can see, this is this is pretty wet right now. Uh, remember what I told you about uh, stretching paper and stuff. It doesn't matter too much here. So we're going to wait. You see these wet spots here? You, you're going to see a variety of texture in there. I, I did that uh, intentionally because some of it will take and some of it won't. We're going to wait and wait till the sheen's almost gone. It depends on the humidity, where you live, how wet your paper is, the type of paper it is. Basically, you gotta practice. This is all the salt I'm using. And, and I'll sprinkle it across there in a couple of minutes. I'm still waiting. I want it to dry a little bit more. Timing is important when we do this, and, 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 and that takes practice too. 
you can see it start to granulate a little bit. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit here on the top. You can see it start to absorb the water itself. I'm going to wait a few minutes uh, since this is a demonstration. And then I'll sprinkle some more down here on the bottom. <clears throat> now, you can use a hair dryer to dry this thing down. I, I don't really like doing that. Uh, I like to wait a while and, and uh, let it dry naturally. This is still too wet. So we're going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, sometimes it takes a while. So I'm going to shut this off for a couple of minutes and then I'll come back when I think it's a little bit drier and uh, we'll sprinkle some more salt on it. Okay, it, it's been about two or three minutes since I spoke to you. Personally, I think it's still a little too wet, but I'm going to sprinkle some more salt on it and, and, and we're going to see what happens here. This is on the right side. Okay, it's working a little better in some areas. Up in here it's working fine. It's still too wet down in here. This is the reason why you have to stretch your paper. You can see it start to pick up here and, and pick it. Let me, let me put a little bit more here. Up here in the upper part where it appears to be dry. This requires, if you're going to make a good painting, a lot of work. Uh, it's still used a lot. A, a lot of watercolor artists use it. You can see it's very wet down in here. This is entirely too wet. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to wait. It's starting to get there. You can see up in here. It's working well in here. Real well. You know, it's, it's still, the, the gloss still has not gone off of it all the way. We're going to wait another two minutes. I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some more in here and we'll see how that works. Okay, this area here just about reached the right point. I'm going to put some salt on there and we're going to see how this works out. And You know you can tell almost immediately and I, I'm not going to throw any more salt after this. Uh, here's a wet area down here. Here's some here. And up here where I told you earlier you can see it working well in there. And, and uh, And this is it. Now, now, again, if, if you like using this technique, it, it, it can work well. It's a beautiful technique. Just got to practice a lot with it and, and learn your paper. The paper makes a lot of difference and of course the paint does. Watercolor is not an easy medium to work in. It requires practice and, and practice and practice. Uh, and, but you can get a lot of beautiful techniques with it. The, this salt, some parts of it are going to work. Up in here it's going to work well and, and down in here. This is another reason why you need your paper tight when you start working with a lot of water so it doesn't buckle and, and, and put a lot of stuff in there. Okay, now remember now, after you do this, you can put a glaze over it, you can do it again, you can do it again, or you can just leave it like it is. Uh, but this is a, a technique exclusive to watercolor. Throw in salt, get you a nice coarse grain salt, get nice big chunks of this in here. Now I'm going to let this dry. I'm not going to blow it dry with a hair dryer or any kind of dryer. We'll just let it dry as is. And once it's dry, I'm going to clean it off and come back and show you what it looks like uh, after this is done. Okay, it's dry now. <clears throat> We've thrown our salt. The, the surface was not uniform and you're going to see various effects from throwing this salt. Uh, <clears throat> the salt's still on there. Uh, the paint uh, made it stick. So I'm going to take this hockey brush and, and I'm going to wipe the salt off and then we're going to take a close look at what we got here. Okay, 
You'll notice how some of it still sticks on there. Some of it you're going to have to rub pretty hard to get it off there. And I'm going to use my hand to get some of it off, which is okay. And it, and it sticks pretty tight. You know, the, that gum Arabic is really like a glue. And uh, you'll have to do this uh, also on on your painting. Okay. Now now let's let's take a look at the effects that we have up here. This worked well. You can see it, it, it sort of looks like snowflakes and stuff. And it worked well. This, this is the right wetness when you want to throw salt. Down here, too dry. Over here, too wet. And, and you see what happens. With, and, and this is really the effect you, you want to try and, try and get. Um, Again, it's, it's just a technique. You can use it for whatever you need to use it for. I, I don't use it a lot. Uh, I, I will use it uh, on rocks and trees and, and other things, and, and then I'll go in and paint over it. And every once in a while, I'll use it in small areas. Uh, I, don't, I don't use it in large areas. It, it, and I like some of the techniques, the way it looks and stuff. Common technique. Use a lot in watercolors. Uh, use it for whatever you want.